So, show me your kids. There is evidence that contradicts this who needs dad assertion. But that's not the point. The point is that people think it's true and act accordingly. Mark Thomas became active in Families Need Fathers after his divorce, which he didn't instigate, left him on the edge of his own family. How has your status changed from the time when you were a father at home with three children to now, do you think? Well, it's, it's changed in, in several ways. I mean, I, my, my status in, in the family is greatly reduced. I'm no longer the, the head of the household. I'm no longer the, the father. I'm some distant figure who, who can't really be placed. Obviously, they still, emotionally, I'm still their father and somebody I, they know. But I think they, they find it impossible to... I think they think of their mother as being, you know, the one who's in charge, and that's how it is in... in you know, they'd always uh, look to her for the decisions now. If, if, if man's role was as the, was as the, the breadwinner, um, if, that, if that was all he was, then, then that is gone. You know, and, and women like my wife are finding that they can... They just don't need that man there. Mark blames feminism. Others don't, but still agree that there's a problem. Fathers do bring different things um, from mothers to families. What they bring is being a representative of the male sex, and that will have all kinds of uh, behaviour differences. When fathers are very involved in, with, with their children's upbringing, it, and in a positive way, it gives a child a terrific start in life. There's a huge body of research from just about every country in the world that cho shows that children who maintain good relationships with both parents after families separate are the children who do best. Throughout the 70s, women's liberation campaigned hard and successfully to give girls an equal start in life. They weren't to be imprisoned in the home, they could choose. If men are losing out at work, shouldn't we open up the option of the home to them? It's not easy. It's very important here not to blame women and hold them responsible for men's lesser participation at home. But I think we do need to recognise that it is an area which women hold as their own, where perhaps they feel they don't have equal opportunities elsewhere, which they very certainly don't in many areas, and that this is something they hold on to as a compensation and also as a habit. And it can... the kind of... Men, women often want men to share but they really don't want to share power. So they'll want him to be mother's little helper, but not really to take responsibility. But I'd like to see men being given more options. You know, I think one of the great things about women of my generation is that we feel we have options in so many areas. And, it, and the young women coming after us feel it even more strongly. We have options at work, we have options in the family. We can feel valuable wherever we are. And I think it would be wonderful if men could feel that too. But it ain't happened yet. Not that men come second best in everything. Goodness gracious me, no. There are still some areas that our sex is particularly adept at, like uh, crime, for instance. We're very good at that. And getting sent to prison, we're pretty good at that too. And uh, increasingly, suicide. We're number one there as well. Just look how far ahead of the girls we are in the Crime Statistics League. Roughly 50,000 women are convicted of a crime every year. Men seldom drop below seven times that number. Men are more likely to be addicts. Twice as many men drink heavily, although women are catching up a bit here. And over the last 10 years, the number of men who commit suicide has nearly doubled. I think there's a lot of evidence these days to suggest that there is a real concern about men and suicide. Uh, 70% of all suicides, over 70%, are by men. 80% of suicides of young people are by men. In the last 10 years, there's been something like a 118% increase in attempted suicide amongst men. Now, if you put all those statistics together, I think it adds up to a lot of concern. Of course, this isn't the first time we've had a problem with one of the genders. 30 years ago, People campaigned for the equality of women because they saw it as a big, big problem that women weren't studying mathematics, that they weren't becoming scientists, that they weren't becoming doctors, that the whole professions were locked off to them and that many women who wanted to weren't actually going out to work at all. Well, 
So the argument goes, if we can be that successful with one gender, why shouldn't we now do exactly the same for men and boys? Why shouldn't we institute a programme as far-reaching and as ambitious to help them come to terms with the modern world? We could start in the schools. Let's institute policies to assist boys to catch up in language and communication skills and to help them with their homework. At work, we could look at training young men to overcome the difficulties they have with flexibility and multitasking and look at introducing male quotas in some jobs. And why not encourage dads with proper paternity leave and give equal rights and responsibilities to unmarried fathers? Oh, and there's something else. When I was younger and I used to read those boys' own comic books, it used to puzzle me why we were ever afraid of the silly, bombastic Germans. The Brits could run unscathed through machine gun fire, but the chasing Germans would clip the corner of the curb in their armoured cars and explode in a ball of orange fire and oily smoke. Why, I used to wonder, did they ever bother? And now I'm wondering the same thing about men. Popular culture increasingly represents them as being useless, feckless, violent, abusive, impotent, lousy lovers, horrible husbands. In adverts, men get their rumps stepped on by women in stilettos or thrown through plate glass windows because they've had the nerve to borrow the girlfriend's motor. Now, one of the first things that feminists did when they were campaigning for equality was to try and rid popular culture of the worst of its anti-woman bias. Is it just possibly time for men to begin to do the same thing? Surely, the argument goes, when you've got a problem, the sensible thing is to address it. Thank you.